Well, thank you for coming out for the Power User Features webinar. Um, let's get started. Um, we have a lot of things that we want to cover, so let's get right into it. The, the first uh, item on the list here is um, we're going to show you how to customize your institution's homepage. And um, basically what that is, this is a header um, right at the top of the page when you're in academia. And um, let's see, um, the way you're going to go about that is uh, we're going to go to the control panel, uh, select appearance and themes, keep the selection at the school level, and then we're going to finally we're going to look in the header content area and edit that section. So let's try it now. Right, so here's my uh, academia I've logged in here, and we're going to go to the control panel, appearance and themes. Leave it set to the college level, so the default level there. Click on View Settings. All right, when we get here, uh, you notice there's two sections: the header content and the sign-in station. Now, the sign-in station would just be the, the default sign-in station if you didn't have one uh, set up at one of the centers. Um, here, right here, where it says header content, this is where we're going to be editing this. And just to give you an idea, this is what I created—a little table here that has my college logo as well as some information. Um, and just so you can see how you can edit that, we actually have um, a whole bunch of tools right here. They're like uh, the Word uh, Office tool. And I'm going to actually maximize this by clicking the say square down here. So you can get a full page view. And you just click that again to get out of there. And uh, it has some options. You can insert tables. Uh, a smiley face if you want to do one of those. Those are going to be too small for me though, so um, I'm going to insert a picture. And there's a couple different options on these, um, like you can insert a picture that's already on the, on the web by adding its um, web address, the URL here. You can upload one from your computer. Um, we're going to do this one here, and I've got some clicked out here. And so paste that in there. Put OK. Uh, so there's our image. Uh, and I just grabbed that randomly there, but that's basically what it would do is it would add the image in there. We'll just add one of these little smiley for now. And we're gonna click on the square to go away from that. Save that. Okay, now you can see that we did edit the uh, header content on your uh, uh, institutions. Uh, so all across the uh, the campus, that's just going to show up when they log in on the top there. Okay, and the next thing you're going to do is you're going to customize your My Homepage, which is the first page that loads um, right below the header um, when you get into Academia. And um, the way you can do that, um, first you um, have two options uh, using the Google Shared Calendar, where you can add a, a calendar to your um, academia homepage, um, and also a, a college news section. And um, I'd like to show you uh, how to do that. And um, right here, the uh, at the My Homepage, you can either click on it over here or it's the first page that loads, you, you would click on Add Content, and it would bring up a lot of options of what you can add on there, and um, you can remove them, and there's a few other options. So let's, let's actually see that now. So we're going to go back to my home page. And um, I've already got some things up here, like these are my appointments in academia. If I had any, they'd be listed there. I have an inbox, um, pending surveys from CNN headlines and the uh, academia blog. And um, the way I added those is I clicked right here uh, on add content and uh, selected one of these options here. Right. And before we add uh, some content, I want to show you the two uh, customizable uh, fields here. So we're going to go uh, control panel, click on announcements, View settings for the college. 
This is where you can add your uh, shared Google calendar. You just put in your uh, Google ID. And just to show you what that would look like, if you go to your um, Google Calendar and select your calendar, you get a calendar setting. When you scroll down, you actually have a calendar ID right here under the calendar address. That's where you pull that from. You put that in there, and that will be available um, for uh, your shared calendar for everyone to see when, uh, if you add that to the home page. Um, also down here, this is the college news section. And what you do, you have that same uh, word editor. You'll click that square box. And as you can see, you can fully customize anything that's in here. I actually put an embedded Google Calendar in there. So if you're familiar with web objects, you can basically do that. And also I created some um, links to our uh, campus news. So I have those in there. And if you get really techy, you can actually write the source code on here. But it does have all the three um, done ones like adding pictures, tables, the smiley faces, and all the other things. So what we're going to do, you would normally save these changes once you have those in there. We're going to go back to my home page. And we're going to add that to the home page. So the first one is the college news. Okay, and you see it put it way down here, but I don't want it down there. So all I have to do is click right here when I get that symbol and drag this up. Because I want that to be the first thing that you see. Alright, and um, as you can see, this is that news page that I just uh, created in there. And if we wanted to add the shared Google Calendar, let's say I didn't know how to do the embedded calendar. This is the easy one where I just find my ID and put it in there. I click on the Google uh, Shared Calendar here. And as you can see, it put the Shared Calendar in there. So it's the same same calendar, just a different way of going about it. So. And then just to close that, and then that way, this is how my information would appear. Um, one of the cool ones that, that uh, you can actually add is the um, Academia Blog News. This is really cool because you can get the latest tips and tricks um, from uh, the developers um, from Academia. And they all come in a news uh, feed right here. And you can learn about new features, like we have the new guest sign-on feature. So if we click on that, it will take us right over to the Academia blog, so we can learn about that. And um, also, um, click on the blog tab up there, and you can scroll through and see all these articles, even links to the older posts that we have on there. And um, some of these actually have options as well. Um, you could actually show you know, only a certain number of headlines. Like, let's say I want to change that to only show the last five headlines. I can actually um, change that. So now I only show five headlines here. And these can actually all be moved around as well. So that way I can organize it how I like it. Right. Next thing is integrating iAcu with Academia, and if you're not familiar with it, um, iAcu is actually uh, uh, software that you can uh, add to your iPhone and um, allow for uh, classroom attendance. Uh, and if you um, have an iPad or, or iPod, um, you can actually do that. You have, you have to register that with us, um, and. Once you guys have it registered, then you can start taking classrooms off of those devices. And it's easier than you actually think. Um, what you would do first, you'd want to go down and uh, download that from off, either off your iPad or iPhone. And, um, or you can actually go to the website and uh, have it downloaded to your phone this way. <coughs> Once you've uh, got that downloaded, um, with these screenshots that we see that here. 
you're going to enter your um, academia credentials. And it's already got the academia.net in there, so all you do is put in your university, uh, the first part of your academia, and then your user ID and password. From there, you're going to tell it to sync up, and it'll start syncing up and allow you to start tracking the classes. And like I said, you do have to have those devices registered. So if you guys haven't um, heard, uh, heard about this product and you're interested in it, um, you might want to talk to a sales rep so you can get that um, for your uh, center. Um, a cool feature is once they're in here, is you can actually see all the devices that are uh, synced up and when the last time they have synced up and manage uh, multiple devices. Um, I only have one listed here. And um, when I go in here, we're, we're just going to see the one. And you go uh, to find those under sign-in stations, I ask you. Because those are set up basically like uh, classroom sign-ins. And um, under here, you'll see the last time it was synced when it was activated. And you can actually deactivate them from here as well um, if you're not going to be using that. Uh, device, and then you can manage the swipes um, if you have multiple devices here. So, so we don't have any that are, are actually being used. So. But that's how you would manage that. Uh, the next topic is integrating AccuWB with Academia. This is also another add-on product here. Um, AccuWD is a whiteboard program. Um, if you're not familiar with that, that you can um, basically conduct meetings or maybe even tutoring sessions uh, and have multiple people in on an uh, online whiteboard session. And it actually has some really powerful features um, like in, uh, automatically uh, adding uh, equations um, encyclopedia information, if you wanted to pull that up really quickly. You have all the full drawing tools and capabilities on the, on the whiteboard. You can also share files and uh, uh, do video um, and uh, voice chat uh, through that program as well. So it's pretty cool. And um, to get that linked up, it's going to be pretty simple. This is actually a demo account that we're filling in right here, but you would actually put in your your normal user login information uh, from the website. You would just actually um, click on whiteboard over on the left hand side and put in that information and tell it to save that information. Once you do that, you're basically going to create, create a one click um, option here where you can launch the whiteboard once you're signed in to Academia. And if you want to see that, let's see that too. Right here, whiteboard. We'll click on launch whiteboard. And it may be being blocked here. Okay, so that's normally going to launch whiteboard. Okay, I'll just click it a second. And um, you would see all your meeting rooms where you could have your uh, different sessions. And you're automatically logged in, so you'd just be able to click log out right here. All right. All right, the next power user option is a uh, reporting option here. Mm. One of the nice features with um, Academia, you actually have a multitude of different um, output formats for your report. Um, of course, PDF and uh, Excel, um, which most people are familiar with, but you also have Word, <coughs> a web archive, an XML, and a newly uh, added CSV file format. Another uh, feature here is the export data feature. Um, this can be um, accessed from the advanced on the left hand side and um, under uh, export. And I'm going to show you real quick because that's actually a pretty powerful tool if you uh, click on that, advanced and export. It will take you to a whole list of uh, data that you can get from out of this. And um, for instance, if you wanted um, all your in 
uh, appointment information if you wanted all the session logs, um, all the log in, log out for your students, if you wanted your student enrollment, um, what uh, tasks the um, tutors are assigned to. So you can actually just click on one of these and it'll create a, a CSV ready to import maybe in another program that you use with all the data. All right. Now this next feature is uh, report generated groups. <clears throat> what groups are good for is uh, when you're creating reports, um, if you need to maybe specialize a certain group of your student body or something, like maybe you want just the freshmen um, or you need all the at-risk students or something like that, you basically can create a group for them. So when you're doing the reporting, you can only, you know, have it only report on those particular students. This is really neat because um, if you haven't already created the group, you can actually create it from a, a report that you've already read and filtered by those students. Let's go ahead and check that out. Um, and uh, in my scenario, I have a uh, picture day tomorrow. I had uh, students already A through M uh, take the pictures, but I need to create another group. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to run a report on my uh, student list here. And you see I have a group here that I could already sort, and I could actually select those students if I needed them again. But um, I'm going to create a new group here. And we're in here. Actually, I could have just sorted that um, through here, but we'll just go to these. Alright, so I selected the, the MTV student, and um, we're not actually creating the group right now. <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to view the report. Alright, when I get the report, and um, I'm not going to actually open it, but if you uh, that you would actually have all those students you just selected on a list and um, to uh, create a group off of them you're going to go to user accounts group and you have a tab here called report generated group you're going to select on that and you'll notice that it says filtered next to the report that you just ran and you can check the time and date and what I would do is I'd highlight that by clicking on it I'm going to click edit. Alright, so um, it basically, if you look, I'm going to have to go to the next page here. It's going to have the uh, people already selected that are students. You can have the little student icon here. Some of these are tutors in this list, but it will have all the students that are in the last part of the alphabet here. So we're just going to call this M Z student and save those changes. So now that I've uh, saved those changes, you see now I have both my um, student list, A through M and M through Z. So I can now use those later on whenever I'd like to use those in a report. Alright, and the next thing here is uh, utilizing your texting feature. This is basically to allow you to send text messages to students uh, via Academia. What you have to do is first set that up. You want to enable the messaging under Control Panel, User Account. Um, when you go to Control Panel, User Account, you'll have all the way at the bottom a communication section where you can enable chat, messaging, and other features as well. Um, and then once you have that enabled, you'll notice you have a blue bar down here where you can either send uh, new messages and also the new text messages. So if you just click on that blue bar right there, it would open a screen where you can create a new text message or SMS message um, to your student body. And you can actually um, use any of the student groups, any of the student's names. So if they're just a specific person, you could tell them, uh, meet me in the library at uh, 4 p.m. for tutoring or something. Um, for this one, in this scenario, I have a pep rally and I wanted that to go out to everyone. 
And I just, um, I could actually have selected all. There is an all option. I just chose each individual group to show that. And then you just hit send, and it sends it off to all your, um, all your uh, students that you have selected. And I just want to show you that real quick as well. So you click on new text message. I'm going to type in a particular student. And I'm going to search all the people. Alright, so there he is. And we're going to type in a text message. And hit send. Okay. All right. And now we don't have it actually set up on here. That's actually a, a feature that um, when you do have that text messaging, I believe you get the first uh, 400 text messages free, and then after that you'll have to um, sign up for an account um, where it's two cents a text message. So that's what that message is showing down there. Normally you get a green bar saying that it sent three successfully. Alright, now the next feature here is about customizing your sign-in process. There's several different things that you can do on the sign-in uh, process. <clears throat> the first uh, one is one of our new features is actually to allow a guest sign-in feature. And what that does is it actually allows um, you to let somebody that's maybe not part of the school um, sign-in. Um, you know, maybe you have certain guests that are coming by or whatever and you just wanted to get a head count. That's basically what this will allow so that you can get head counts. I won't let you know who it was, but it will allow for those people to be logged in and counted. The next thing is a fixed walk-in. And um, basically what that is, is like let's say you want to assign a certain sign uh, station to only be uh, used for a certain purpose. Um, so what you would do is you'd actually specify which uh, of those Tutors, um, subject areas, um, services that that particular sign-in station can be used for. And it's best if I go in there and uh, take a look at that. So we're going to go to sign-in station, computers. Um, if you didn't have yourself a sign-in station um, for that, you'd want to go ahead and click this link. Um, it usually would say, make me a sign-in station. In this scenario, we actually have um, myself set up as a, um, a lab PC in the PC Components Lab. So um, what we're going to do is we're, uh, I chose to view that lab. I could choose other labs as well to view the computers that they, that they have. But I'm going to choose that lab. And we're going to select the uh, PC that I am right now because I want to test it on my machine. And we're going to select fix walk-in. Okay. And I have one already put in here. This is to show only lab hours for the subject hours or subject area. Mm. So we're going to create a new one because I want um, to only show on this one uh, email and internet use. All right, so we're going to select on the uh, subject area here. We're going to call it only email and internet. That's what they have as part of the choice. We, if we had other services, we could um, add those. I don't have services for this area, but I could also say um, that the only tutor is going to be the tutor. So it will automatically uh, log them in for the, the specific thing. We're going to save the changes. Now the other thing that we have to do is, um, now that we have them in there, um, I have to click on it and set that. So once you set that, that means that, that this um, sign-in station, PC Lab uh, PC002, is actually going to be set to only use uh, for email and internet uh, use. So let's go ahead and test that. We're going to sign out. As you remember, we were that sign-in station. So you see it's already set to the uh, settings. So all the student has to do is go ahead and sign in.
let's try a different scooter, maybe that. Okay, so it signed her in. And let's see. And then you can sign her out. Alright. And as you can see we also have the guest feature turned on here. So what that would do is it would just tell you that the guest has signed in. So it adds to the head count there. Using the settings. Now we're going to log back in as the administrator. And to go ahead and turn that off, you just go back to your signing station. Select the lab where you're located. Select the computer. Click six walk in. And clear. So now it should return back to a normal sign where they have more than just the uh, few options. Okay, and as you can see, they have both the options that were there. And then they can sign in. Alright, let's go back here. Alright, the next thing I want to show you is a um, way to customize your sign-in process um, using the intake system. The intake system is a great system if you have a waiting line where maybe there's uh, fewer staff members than there are students ready to be seen. Um, and this is great for like counseling centers or um, places where you have limited staff. As you can see, when they sign in, it would say you're now in line and remain in the area until you name called. And um, this would be what your uh, receptionist or secretary would see. It's the career counseling uh, one that I have set up. And basically on this side they have uh, students waiting in line and the tutors that are available to help them. Um, and then also over here um, is everybody who is actually meeting uh, with a uh, tutor or a counselor. And you can change that terminology to reflect you know, counselor, tutor, whatever. Alright, so let's see that. We'll log back in with my admin. And uh, you get to that under intake system, under center attendance. And I have my career counseling, but we're going to want to set this up for, um, let's do this for the English study tab. And when you click on it, um, that's actually what enables it. So it's asking you, like, do you want to enable waiting line for the center? So you say yes. Okay. So now um, you see that the English Studies Lab is now um, set up for a waiting line. So what you would do is you'd create a sign-in station for them, and you'd have the students start to sign in, as well as the tutors. When they get in there, you're going to be able to select the student, pair them up with the tutor, so that they show in. And I'm actually going to go um, back to the one that I've already got set up. But um, some of the things that you can do also is uh, remove the student from the line if they're no longer waiting. Um, you can disable the waiting line and um, change the waiting line uh, settings. So, so let's go back to the intake just a moment here. And we're going to go to career counseling. Okay, so as you can see, we have these two students, so I'm going to select the first one that's in line. And with our available tutor, I'm going to select them. All right, and um, when I do that, I want to assign in the students. Now, I have the option of uh, not assigning in a particular um, tutor, like maybe I don't have the tutor logged in at the moment. So I click sign in, and they get a blank tutor that you can fill in later. Um, or, um, you know, since we know we chose Robert, we're going to sign them in to Robert. And as you can see, they're down here um, being helped now. And you still have your list of uh, students that are ready. Mm -hmm. 
right. and um, once they um, sign out, uh, you'll be able to do that for the next one. And uh, the change waiting line will take you back to it as well. So that's what we do. I'm actually going to disable it for this guy. And you see it's, it's no longer blue. The red is because we have uh, students waiting at that clinic. Alright, the next uh, power user feature is using the grids wisely. Um, this is on any of the screens in academia that you have data. Uh, it could be subject areas, um, your uh, report scheduling, um, your students that you have listed, your uh, instructors, maybe even your tutors. Um, basically you have a multi-select feature, which is actually uh, pretty new. And uh, the sort and filter, which is these um, magnifying glasses. And also by clicking on the, the word, it'll actually sort them, uh, either you know, alphabetically or alphabetically. And um, let's go ahead and take a look at what I mean by that. So we're going to go to users and students. And as you can see, if I, if I click up here, we're doing a sort from A to Z. If I click anywhere on that bar again, um, it does it in the reverse order. I also can click on the magnifying glass and do a search for a particular student. Um, now these work a little differently um, where there's actually a pre-filled option. So for instance in the gender, I have a drop down where I can show all the male students, all the females if I have those uh, populated. Um, same here um, with the active students, if they are or they're not. So I could easily see who's active or not. Um, using the multi-select, let's say I wanted to enable that feature. What it does is it gives me the option to select multiple people. Let's say I wanted to register these three students. I'd be able to edit them, go to their uh, class registration, and set them for a particular class. And then the last thing here is the export option. So basically right from here, I can click export and it Excel. And it's going to send my results to an Excel spreadsheet. So uh, here's the, uh, the students I had selected with, with the rest of the student list that I had up. All right, and then this brings us to uh, customizing uh, your email template. <clears throat> um, during certain events, like appointments that are created, um, a user changes their password, like a, a tutor, an instructor, changes their password. There's different um, emails that are automatically sent out by the, um, the system. You can actually customize these so that they uh, match your school's uh, information. And we go to our control panel and go to email template. As you can see, I've already got a lot of these um, uh, done, but there's, there's still a bunch that you can do. You click on create new. Um, I don't think I have a show report, so we'll continue. Okay, and um, basically, at this point, you can actually um, change the information that's already in there. And it should take a moment to load it. It has some um, selected fields, like uh, the sender's first name, sender's last name, which are used with these uh, number symbols. And you can reuse those that way. It, It'll actually show up down here how it would, you know, kind of look like in the two field. We have uh, the user at university.edu. So. <coughs> and um, you would just save those changes when you finished up with that. All right, 
Now this is uh, maybe a little advanced for some people out there, but you can actually add custom coding. Um, it basically allows you to do certain things uh, outside of the norm. Um, the custom coding is uh, documented um, at our Academia EXT site. And um, here's a few of the links. Um, it's uh, you know, code.google.com slash t slash academia.exp and add it uh, a slash after that. That should get you to the main page. From there, um, these are just some of the ones that I highlighted. Like uh, you can actually uh, custom customize the uh, data source for AVX where you could take like an import from Banner directly and um, have that upload to uh, ADX software. One of the other cool things is having a customized uh, home page login. And um, I actually want to go through and show you uh, one example of that. Um, as an example, I basically have this code here which uh, is set up as an iframe that I could place anywhere on my, my website, on my uh, school's website. What you notice know here, there's two things to look out for. Um, the first thing is that it wants to know what my academia um, site is. So for instance, that's my school name dot academia.net and then also where it's going to send me after I log out. So this would be my school's website. So here is a custom home page. Basically this is my school's website. It has all my news and everything like a normal website here. But then I have a login uh, up in the top right. Uh, so that users can access it easily from my um, school's website. <clears throat> and um, I actually have a live version of that as well. <clears throat> so let's take a look at that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to log out here because it will mess that up. So I'm going to log out here. This is my uh, pretend school uh, web page here. So I have my code that I put in there. I'm going to log in just like you guys have seen me doing <coughs> at the actual Academia site. To my school's website. Okay, and it takes me right in so that I can get my work done. Once I've done my report, I've ran a few student lists or two. Then I'm going to sign out. Okay, and it takes me right back to my page. And that's what that was supposed to do with that custom login. So that's a really powerful feature, and if you guys are able to do that, um, I recommend that. All right, and um, that's all the features. I know that was a lot. And um, so if I have any questions here, and I see them kind of going off here, they all right, and I have a question here uh, from Dave. <clears throat> Can I customize the pages for all my centers differently? And um, the answer to that is actually yes. Um, the way you would go about that is uh, let's log back in. I reckon I could have done it from here. So what you're going to do is when you go to your control panel, <clears throat> um, we left a lot of these, we went to appearance and themes, we left them set to the college level so that we could um, edit it on the, the college uh, uh, site or on that level. What you would actually do is you'd actually select a different um, center like, for instance, career counseling, um, English studies lab. PC Components Lab, all those can actually be fully customizable if, if we actually go to um, the library here, I think I have a little bit different information. Um, so let's click on this stand here. So yeah, I have Library Computer Lab, the hours of operation, with a little message here. So it's a little different than the other guys but you can actually do that for each individual center. Alright, uh, isn't it expensive to take a large student group? Um, yeah, I mean it can add up um, as you do those. Usually though it's, um, I believe, like, you know, 
uh, he sends a text message, so it just depends on how many messages you want to send out there. Um, so yeah, you know, if you get really carried away with that, it could um, come out to a large amount. But I mean, if you're sending out to that many students, since it's important information, it may be um, worth it. And um, you know, it's really not that big of a cost associated with the text messaging. Um, I guess it's something that you'd have to determine if that would be something you want to use. You do also have the emailing feature where it actually will email out uh, messages as well um, to the students and when they log into academia or um, you know to their actual email as well. The next question is can you create a group from a profile report let's say where I find out the student year then I can use that group to filter other reports. And yeah that's kind of like what we had done with the, the one here, but um, let's see, we find out the to Yeah, you can actually select multiple filters. I think that's what they're trying to say. Um, let's go to reports here. And correct me if, that's, if that was incorrect, but um, everybody is unmuted, so. Okay, so like I have my groups here. So for instance, I'm going to choose the freshman. And um, also I want, um, you know, the, the A to Z freshman. Or I'm sorry, A to M. So you can select multiple groups within that selection. And um, if you wanted to, you could even go even further and say um, the only, only ones that are registered for biology. And you know you can keep keep going with the filtering down so you have the specifics that you need. If you wanted a student ID on there, you can show that as well. So if I run a report um, and I return back, like from my profile field, field has all my freshmen. I can run that report and then get all my freshmen and then make a student group right there. Yeah, like for instance, let's say we wanted to run this one. Like I'm going to uncheck the subject area, but you saw how we did the two groups here. I had the freshman and it was just the A to Z or A to M. I, mean, I don't even have a freshman group yet. Okay, yeah, you could actually create it um, right from that. So um, you would have to um, maybe... Um, go through here, the student, and if you have a, a list or some way of, of figuring out where the, the freshmen were, does that answer it, or were you looking for something? Okay, yeah, I was just thinking, like, if I, you know, had a profile field, and one of the field, you know, one of the answers is year, um, you know, then if I could use that profile field, you know, and pull just freshmen, I wonder if I could get that report and then somehow make a group out of that. That's a good question. Um, yeah, because we do have the profiles. Let's see. When you go to students here, the way that you see the profile information is by editing one of the students. There's a profile tab where we have all of, so let's say I wanted all the male students. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to see how we would we'll pull that. Um, I think it, it has to be on that report. It has to have that information. Uh, let's see, let's go to... Okay. Uh, if I, if a student profile. There's two profile reports, the user detailed profile. So, uh, and I think it's the other one. Let's, let's try that report, student profile.
Okay, I don't see that option, but yeah, maybe that's something that we can add for the user voice because um, I thought we had an option to, to sort by the profile question. <coughs> um, we could have maybe a, a filter on this part right here. Okay, it, it would have to be on the, the report. So. Can I import the records into a group? Um, yeah, you could actually do an import of student groups as well. So if you already have that information and they're all tied to um, like another system that you're using, maybe the, the banner registration information, um, and you have the student groups already created, you could just do an import right off of that and link it uh, by the student number. Okay. Uh, and I think that's it for questions. Does anybody else have any um, while we have it open? All right, well, um, if that's it, thanks uh, for coming out, and I appreciate your time. Have a great day.